Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we are not going to develop just one skill, but two skills. So hoist up your pants, pull that belt tight, and get ready for some action today with our good buddy who's back on this program again, Jim Azalina. He's with Scheffler, one of the world's largest bearing manufacturers. Jim, it is great to have you back in. Thanks, Tom. I am excited. What's going on today, pal? Well, today we're going to measure radial internal clearance on a spherical bearing. Once we master that, we will take it a step further and learn how to set the clearance when mounting a tapered bore spherical bearing. Okay, you guys hear that? Are you all ready to go? Jim, are we ready? Because uh, we want to make sure that they know they got two skills today. But before we do that, as always, we always have to wear our personal protective equipment. You've got yours on. I'm going to put mine on. We've got safety glasses. Whatever the job calls for, PPE is always important. Jim, I'm ready. Let's go. Two skills. Have at it. Okay. Let's start by taking a look at the spherical roller bearing. Notice that the barrel-shaped rollers, mm -hmm. which are very different from, say, the round rolling elements in a ball bearing. Okay. What we're going to do now is measure the radial internal clearance, which is the distance between the highest spot on the rollers and the outer raceway. This diagram will help illustrate what I'm talking about. All right. Now, Jim, how are we actually going to do this? We will need two things, a set of 12-inch feeler gauges and, of course, the required clearance specification guide for our work. These specifications can be found on prints, catalogs, online, or, and most conveniently, these cards, which are readily available from your shuffler or motion rep. Okay, and actually, I'm going to put these on Facebook for everybody, too, just okay. so they have them, okay? Okay, great. We have to have that. Absolutely. Okay, are you going to like it if I do that? Absolutely. Okay, I'll good. like it. All right. We will begin by taking a look at the specified range within which the bearing's radial clearance must be prior to mounting, for example, while it's sitting here. Okay. To do this, we first have to determine the bearing's bore in millimeters by taking the last two digits of the bearing number, which in this case are 32. Okay. Multiplying them by 5. Since 5 times 32 equals 160, we now know that our bearing bore diameter is 160 millimeters. That's pretty simple, 5 times 32. I'm good with that. So we've identified our bearing bore diameter. Okay, Tom. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. To help our viewers follow along, this is what the card looks like. Since we know that we have a 160 millimeter bore, we look under the column nominal bore diameter to find the range that fits our bore, which in this case is the line that says over 140 millimeters to 160 millimeters. Uh, wait a minute, under uh, nominal bore, I've got my next door neighbor. So I, I may have a different card than you. We're gonna go by your card. Okay, okay right. we'll do yours. Since our bearing is marked C3 clearance, we move across the chart to the column marked C3 under the section radial clearance prior to mounting. Here, we see the radial clearance prior to mounting for our bearing should be in the range of seven to nine thousandths of an inch. With me so far, Tom? Yeah, I think what you're talking about is that space in between there is going to be somewhere measured in there, and we're actually going to be measuring that to see exactly what it is. Absolutely. All right, I love it. Now we go back to our bearings and rotate the roller and cage assembly so that the top roller is in the 12 o'clock position. Okay. Here is an important tip. If this bearing were hanging by a strap or a shaft or whatever, we would need to measure from the 6 o'clock position instead of the 12 o'clock position. Is there any time we would do the 5 o'clock position because it's always 5 o'clock somewhere? No? <laughs> um, no, we won't. We won't go down that. We wouldn't do that? Okay, yeah, we're not going to go there. Don't, don't go that way. Yeah. Okay, we got it, Jim. Keep okay. going, pal. All right. Now it's time for our set of feeler gauges. Right. And here we want to make sure we keep everything clean. We will start with a smaller size feeler gauge and move back and forth in a sawing type motion like this. Notice that there is no resistance with this smaller feeler gauge. Yeah, so so that's we will not need to try work. a larger one. All right, I'm with you. So we're going to keep doing that until we find the right size gauge. Is that that's correct? That's correct. Okay. And so we progressively increase the size of the feeler gauge until we feel just enough resistance. In this example, our gauge is now at eight thousandths of an inch. Okay, I can see how that's just a little bit there for you. Okay. Which is right in the middle of our range. We now know how to measure the radial internal clearance of our spherical roller bearing. Are you ready to move on to setting the clearance, Tom? Of course I am, because you are the man. Let's how, we, how do we do that? Okay. Now, it's important to understand that whenever we mount a tapered bore onto a tapered shaft or adapter sleeve, moving up that taper expands the inner ring mm -hmm. and reduces the amount of radial clearance. Okay. This diagram should help illustrate what I'm describing. Now, Tom, we know that we just measured our unmounted clearance and found it to be eight thousandths of an inch, correct? That's right. You used the feeler gauge, so we're at eight thousandths of an inch. Then, let's go back to our nifty card with okay. the clearance box. All right. Moving across the same row 
to the column reduction in radial clearance brings us to the range of between three thousandths of an inch to just under four thousandths. Okay. All we do now is subtract three thousandths from our original bench measurement of eight thousandths of an inch, which equals five thousandths. Got it right. See, in, math is important, kids. Stay in school. That's right. Excellent. When we are at five thousandths of an inch, we know we have properly set the radial internal clearance of our spherical roller bearing. And there you have it. How to measure and set the radial internal clearance on a spherical bearing. And Jim, that was simple. If you can make me understand it, I know they can do it as well. All right. Jim, thanks so much. Thank you, That Tom. was Jim Mazzolina. He's with Scheffler. And if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, call me. But you know what? You should contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location because they will help you. I promise you. Hopefully, this will help you with your practical application. And as you saw, Jim was wearing his PPE. I put my on, mine on as well. And whatever the job calls for, make sure you're wearing the right personal protective equipment. Safety is always number one. Hey, and don't forget to look for other Motion Industries how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.